This video explains how to use Farfield 2.0 to create a flexible payment design for a general aviation airport. This video is part of the Farfield Payment Design Series by the Federal Aviation Administration, Office of Airports. Refer to Advisory Circular AC 150-5320-6, Airport Payment Design and Evaluation, and AC 150-5335-5, Standardized Method of Reporting Payment Strength, PCR, for the basis of the design and evaluation procedures implemented in Farfield. In this video, we will develop a flexible payment design on aggregate base and demonstrate the impact of maintenance vehicle traffic on the payment design. Step 1. Name the job and section. See the Farfield Overview video for creating jobs and sections. Create a job, Farfield Video, and add a new section, FlexGA. Step 2. Set the starting structure as HMA on aggregate. This creates a starting structure with four layers, P401 surface, P209 crush aggregate base, and P154 uncrushed aggregate subbase on a subgrade layer with a CBR of 10. Step 3. Edit the structure to reflect site conditions. Note, when doing an analysis of an existing payment structure, the next step is to edit the structure to reflect existing structure, adding or deleting layers, changing layer thickness, and editing properties as needed. In this example, the project Geotech report indicated that the subgrade has a soaked CBR of 3. In Farfield, adjust the subgrade CBR to 3. See Chapter 2 of AC 150-5320-6 for additional information on soil investigations and evaluation. Step 4. Add traffic. In this video, we will use the stored aircraft traffic mix, GA50, which includes four aircraft. 5,000 departures of a Cessna 182 with a gross taxi weight of 3,110 pounds. 1,200 departures of a Saratoga with a gross taxi weight of 3,616 pounds. 250 departures of a King Air B200 with a gross taxi weight of 12,590 pounds. And 50 departures of a generic D50 aircraft with a gross taxi weight of 50,000 pounds. See the payment design quick start video for creating and saving a traffic mix. In a Farfield flexible analysis, the design layer may either be the base or sub-base layers. Farfield designates the design layer with a red arrow in the grid. To change the design layer in the grid view, place the focus on your preferred design layer. Click the Select as the Design Layer button. The red arrow moves to that layer. When doing a flexible pigment design, it is recommended to start with the design options for automatic flexible base design set to Yes. When enabled, the program performs internal calculations to check that the base layer is sufficient to protect a layer of CBR of 20. See AC 150-5320-6, Chapter 3. Step 5. Run the Thickness Analysis. With the P154 subbase layer designated as the design layer and analysis type set to Thickness Design, run the analysis. The analysis is complete once the structure has been adjusted by Farfield to achieve a CDF of 1. In our example, the recommended structure is 4-inch P401, 6-inch P209 base, and 9.8-inch P154 subbase on a subgrade with a CBR of 3. Let's evaluate the impact of operating an airport maintenance vehicle on the pavement by adding 500 departures or operations of a dual-wheel truck axle. This vehicle was found in the non-airplane vehicle group. After adding the maintenance vehicle to the traffic, we run the thickness analysis. Reviewing the results of the analysis by looking at the CDF contributions in the traffic window, we see that the non-airplane vehicle, a dual-wheel truck with just 500 annual operations, is now the most demanding vehicle in the traffic mix. In the Explorer section, select CDF Graph. Reviewing this report, the truck contributes 91% of the damage while the 50 operations of a dual-wheel 50,000-pound gear contribute the remaining damage to this pavement section. This is common at many small airports where a maintenance vehicle or fuel truck will control the pavement design or there are few operations of an aircraft significantly heavier than the rest of the traffic. Next, adjust the layer thickness to reflect construction. In this example, we will assume all materials are available in the area where the project is located. The only change we'll make is to round the P154 subbase layer to 12 inches. Open the design options and make sure the automatic flexible base design is set to no. With most flexible thickness design subgrade strain controls, it is good practice to check that the strain at the bottom of the HMA layer by setting Calculate HMA CDF to Yes. 
If the HMA strain controls, consider a thicker layer of asphalt. Change the analysis type to life slash compaction and run the analysis. Next, review the section report. Save it as a PDF to include in the project engineer's report. The calculated life is based upon a structural life calculation which uses the traffic applied to the pavement section. Structurally, the pavement section can perform for the life indicated. How long a section actually performs is a function of actual traffic, quality of materials, and construction combined with how the pavement materials perform in the environment that they are exposed to. At the bottom of the section report are the subgrade compaction requirements. Note that the subgrade compaction requirements only apply to new construction and typically are only important in cut sections. Farfield computes the subgrade compaction requirements for both non-cohesive and cohesive soils. The footnotes beneath the compaction tables provide the information needed to interpret the tables. They define non-cohesive soils as soils with plasticity index less than 3. Footnote 2 tells us how to evaluate recommended densities relative to existing, as well as what density standard to follow. In our example, the Geotechnical Soils Report indicates the following densities of the existing subgrade. Compare the Farfield compaction requirements to the existing subgrade densities. Relative to the bottom pavement section, 22 inches below the surface, we see that Farfield recommends compacting the top 2 inches of subgrade to 95% and the next 16 inches to 90%. Reviewing the Geotechnical Soils Report, again we see that only 2 inches of subgrade does not meet these requirements. The key is to evaluate compaction requirements relative to existing in-place densities, taking into consideration standard construction practices of recompacting the top 6 to 12 inches of a cut. However, in reviewing item P152, paragraph 2.5 of AC 150-5370-10, we see that the specifications recommend recompacting the top 12 inches of a cut. So for our project, we will recommend recompacting the top 12 inches of a cut to 95% of the standard proctor. This also meets the recommendations of Farfield. In summary, in this example, we have developed a flexible pavement design for a small GA airport considering both aircraft and maintenance vehicle traffic. We have also reviewed the compaction requirements as recommended by Farfield relative to the geotechnical report. These reference materials provide further guidance on designing and constructing airport pavements. See AC 150-5320-6 for additional information regarding FAA standards for pavement design. See AC 150-5370-10 for information regarding FAA recommendations for material specifications. Please visit www.faa.gov airports to find these documents, this tool, and other related design tools. For additional information, contact the FAA's Office of Airports. The FAA appreciates your interest. Safe landing!